If you know what processing needs to be done for producing a vinyl master, what limitations there are in cutting the lacquer and producing the stamper, you might wonder why there are so many vinyl fans. Let's see if I can help you understand this. The dynamic range of vinyl is relatively limited and to make the music fit the storage space reliably and efficiently, the highs are boosted up to 20 dB at 20 kHz, while the lows are attenuated 20 dB at 20 Hz. The phono preamp in your stereo uses the inverse curve, the so called RIAA curve, and in the process reduces the surface noise in the highs with the same amount. Since the lows now need amplification, chances are that rumble caused by the bearings, the engine or the gears in the turntable are amplified. This is why turntables need to be as rigid as possible, while the moving parts need to be in the highest quality bearings. Of course, the slope of the RAAA curve is gradual and nothing like the anti-aliasing filter used in digital, but still. Before cutting an album, the lows are also made mono to limit the groove width. That not only reduces the spatial information in the lows, it also uses yet another filter to separate the lows from the rest. And to prevent the chisel being damaged, a limiter prevents it from cutting too deep. When the lacquer is cut, a mother is made using a galvanic process. From that mother, a negative is made that could have been used as a stamper, but that would greatly reduce the number of discs that can be pressed. So a positive and again one or more negatives, the stampers, are produced using electroplating. These stampers are mounted in a press in which a vinyl puck is placed that holds the labels on both sides. Steam then heats the two sides of the press while they are pressed together. Then cold water cools down the press and the vinyl that is now formed to a vinyl disc. Since this is a mechanical process, wear and tear will slowly lower the quality of each successive record that is pressed by a minute amount. You see why the sound quality of records might not be as good as you might think. Still, many people prefer vinyl over digital. I could dream up the following explanations and especially the last one will surprise you. I've said it before, your ears are only a part of your auditory system. Your brain plays an important and intelligent role. When you are young, it learns over time to judge things by trial and error. The word candy will be associated with sweet tasting things that you get under certain conditions, like a birthday or other festive occasions. The word music will be associated with the sound coming from a radio a stereo or, if you're lucky, real instruments. If you grow up listening to vinyl only, music will mean playing vinyl records with the associated sound. Anything else will take time to get acquainted to. There might also be secondary stimuli that can be associated with playing a record, like the turning of the record on the player, the unpacking of the record from the sleeve and so on. Like there are people that want big VU meters on the front of their power amps for it belongs to the experience. During adolescence this learned behavior might be rejected as part of the character development and when parents play CDs, playing vinyl might be a tool to distance you from your parents. Often this is set as a preference that you keep your entire life. CDs contain digitally recorded music and to convert analog sound into digital, a very steep filter needs to be applied. This filter causes time smearing in the critical mid-range, the spectrum where our ears are the most sensitive. Some are more sensitive to these artifacts than others, I am very sensitive to it. Vinyl sound has to pass some filters too, but they are far from steep and therefore cause far less time smearing. You probably have heard of the loudness war, where artists 
A&R managers and record company executives want the loudness of the music to be higher than any other album on the market, for they believe it will drive sales. It reminds me of what one of the Deep Purple band members shouted during a live concert. Can we have everything louder than everything else? Now, with all recording techniques there is a limit to the maximum modulation. For digital that is even more rigid than for analog, but with digital anything goes below the maximum modulation. So mastering engineers are forced to compress the heck out of music. That usually kills the music since peaks are clipped heavily. Many so called remastered versions are in fact of lower quality than the original. Take for instance famous blue raincoat by Jennifer Warnes. The original release is very critical with sibilance but sounds very nice otherwise. The audiophile remastered version with the blue cover sounds clearly less and there are many more examples. Mastering engineer Sander van der Heide of Wisseloord Studios did a keynote on this recently for me and my Dutch colleagues, instigated by Dali Benelux. Sander told us that he had to make separate masters for about any streaming service, radio stations and one especially for final cutting. The average loudness level for each master had to be different and due to the processing done by many streaming services and radio stations, the effects of compression might lead to different results, so that he needed to find out the best way for each and every medium. For vinyl, the master could not be compressed that heavily for it would ruin the cutting chisel or, if the cutting was successful, make the needle jump the groove. Therefore the vinyl master sound a heck of a lot better than the masters for download streaming and broadcast services. This of course only applies to albums that were recently, say the last 10 years, mastered and cut. For older albums this will not apply or to a far lower degree. So the next time someone says to you that Final sounds better, you now know he could well be right. More interesting facts might appear here, so stay in contact to hear about them by subscribing to this channel or my newsletter or follow me on Twitter, Facebook or Google+. See the show notes for the links. If you have a question, post it below this video, but please don't ask me for buying advice. See my about questions video to find out why. If you like this video, please consider supporting the channel through Patreon and see super exclusive videos too. Just one dollar a month will do. The link is in the show notes. And don't forget to tell your friends on the web about this channel. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on thehbproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music. <laughs>